Welcome to Brutal Reviews, Christina speaking. Today we're talking about plot holes, inconsistencies, and fridge logic in the science series by Michael J. Allen. The first contradiction appears in the first volume, Scion of Conquerors, between chapter 3 or 4, I don't remember, and chapter 7. First, our nameless main character is looking for food in devastated Washington, D.C., and he says all the usual places have already been looted, so it's no use looking in supermarkets or grocery stores. Then come the snatcher camps, and it turns out these camps migrate from one supermarket parking lot to the other and always stay as long as the supplies last, so there are still supplies in the supermarkets. The second inconsistency is really small and really easy to miss because it's between the first volume and the last. In the first volume, Alaric names his ship Cassiopeia after a figure from Greek mythology. In the last volume, he doesn't know about ancient Roman gladiators. Those first two were small, minor glitches, but here comes one big thing that I really don't buy about the backstory. So there is this big interstellar empire spanning several planets, several species, and they have a lot of bureaucracy, and they want to establish contact with the Earth over transit rights. They send a delegation for a conference on Earth. And who do they send? The whole royal family, except one princess. Think about this. You, you're making first contact with a new civilization. You don't know if they're going to be hostile. You don't know if the planet's going to be dangerous or something. You're sending the very first people to make contact. And who do you send? Your whole fo royal family. What can possibly go wrong? The second aspect of Michael J. Allen's science universe that I'm just not buying is the slavery. The Wellerin have conquered Earth. They're using humans to catch other humans. Okay, I get that. Use a human to catch a human. But then they send them to work in a factory. The Wellerin have drones, they have spaceships, they have robots to do everything. Do they really need human engineers to work in their factories? And would they trust human engineers with their machines? And then, in the rest of the universe, Alaric starts freeing sex slaves. Would aliens still have sex slaves? I mean, they have robotic bartenders, they have medical drones, they have spy drones, they have everything. Would they really not have sex robots yet? For comparison, look at Earth. We're only just inventing robots, but what kind of robots are we inventing? Exactly. No. Mr. Allen, I'm not buying the sex slaves and I'm not buying the work slaves either because technology and slavery are incompatible. Did you know that the ancient Greek knew about the steam engine? That's right. The ancient Greek, 500 years before Christ, invented the steam engine. They just didn't use it. They had all the technology to build the railroad. They didn't want to. They didn't use the steam engine f to power stuff. They didn't use wind energy because they had slaves to do their work. The Industrial Revolution only came when our civilization stopped using slaves. So I'm not buying an interstellar civilization that has both slavery and technology. This was Christina with a brief overview of a plot holes and inconsistencies in Michael J. Allen's science series. If you've read the books, and if you found any other plot holes, inconsistencies, fridge logic, share in the comments. Thanks for watching.